Well, friends, good evening to all of you. It's a genuine pleasure to have you with us on this webinar. And it's a very special webinar because we have our global chairperson with us, Mr. Louis Shekinovsky. I'll have a very brief intro about him and then I'll hand it over to him to set the ball rolling for us. Mr. Louis is a psychologist, he's a lawyer, He's a clinical hypnotherapist. His CV runs into a huge, massive volumes. I'll touch upon his very salient issues, which interest me the most. He's a trained sniper. He's a helicopter pilot. He can speak anywhere. He's an air abroad Warwick Business School, UK, a permanent speaker and the only speaker. He has been on the board of Belron, one of the largest companies in the world for 52 years. He's a life member of Royal Society of Medicine UK. With this, Mr. Louis Shakinovsky, it's a pleasure to invite you, sir. Dr. Wimmel, thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Very good. Yes, so firstly, thank you, Dr. Wimmel, and uh, thank you for the tribute. Uh, I have to say that COVID has created a completely new world for all of us. And what has interested me is there's a wonderful saying that I once heard, which said, don't curse the darkness, light a candle. And Dr. Wimmel, this masterclass is a leadership light in these difficult times. And I want to thank you and all the Clovers who've contributed to this masterclass. And I feel really privileged because of, of all the things I might be, I'm not a dentist, but I'd like to feel like an honorary dentist and I always do. But I really look forward to hearing our internationally acclaimed speakers today. So welcome everybody and thank you especially for our speakers for joining us from all parts of the world. You know, this is yet another great initiative, Vimal, which runs through the, the DNA of time. And to you, Vimal, I want to pay a particular tribute to your creativity and your dedication. This was clear to me five years ago when we begged you to join us. And it has been your unstoppable energy and your determination to bring our clove dentists to the leading edge of dental education. You know, there is another wonderful thing that comes to my mind which I think applies to you and to the Clovers. It says, we are very easily satisfied with the very best. So it has been your dedication and energy leading this dental education and the excellence, and in particular, aimed at the highest quality ethical dental care for every single Clove patient. I don't want to take up any more time from our audience and from our masterclass, but I want to thank you all and tell you how very proud of you I am, proud of Clove. They are indeed a light in much darkness. So Dr. Wimmel, I have the pleasure in inviting you to proceed. Thank you, Louis. Thank you so much. Well, friends, uh, as this webinar will unfold today, you will understand why we are here. And that too, why we are here with such strong personalities who have contributed immensely towards this cause which we are going to discuss today. We all know that dentistry is today at a crossroad and the profession is literally being governed in the hands of the statutory bodies or in the form of the regulatory bodies or the associations or the media. I find somewhere that, you know, a police is coming and telling you to uh, close your clinics 
even in emergency times, the dental treatments are not held as a priority one. And wherever uh, a lockdown is there or not there, the statutory bodies are coming and telling that you close the clinics. It's, it's been going on for quite some time. It's high time that somebody sits down and talks about it. And this repeated message from the media, from everywhere, like from various states, that that state has banned dental clinics, that state bans dental clinics, that state says no more clinics. Very surprising, quite shocking. That's why we are here today. And they are doing it to a profession where we know that awareness is already pretty low, very low. When we know that only six to 7% of our population is visiting for dental treatments. And if something like this happens, what will happen to the dentist and what will happen to the oral health of the patients? I have a very firm belief that our dental surgeons are very strong. They know what they're doing and they have been doing this for last hundreds of years that they have been handling the oral cavity very well. They are the best ones. They know it, how to handle saliva, and they also know how to handle the aerosol. It's a bigger problem, as I understood for the lady dentists, which we have, fortunately, we have a large number of them, because they are having pressure from home that you will not go back to the clinic because you may bring disease home. It's very unfortunate when the time has come to serve the humanity in the best of its form at that time, if we are unable to do that, I can understand their frustration. That's why today we set the ball rolling with this dental leadership masterclass, an online webinar series, which will carry on for some time. We roll out with this on today and next month we come up with a much more stronger topic, which is relevant on that day. Now, is it, is it for the first time that we are doing this? No, it's, it's almost, almost, I think it's, it must be a, a thousand webinars under our belt. Only thing is we didn't open it to public earlier, but today it's the first time that we have it opened for all the profession, for my professional colleagues and for my dental surgeons so that all of us can benefit. And we have two stalwarts with us, two stalwarts who have spearheaded the movements in their respective fields that we can practice during this time and how we can practice, which way we can practice. How can we look forward? How can we look beyond COVID? Because this is now known that COVID is staying, staying for a long, long time. Let me introduce you, though I don't have to introduce, but still, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Dr. Anil Kohli. Guys, listen carefully, honorary brigadier, probably the only, only honorary brigadier in the country. Padam Bhushan, Padam Shri, probably the only dentist who has got both these. That is Dr. Anil Kohli. Dr. Anil Kohli's name is synonymous with a dentist par excellence in the country. He has 14 doctorates, written five books, plenty of publications, been the former president of the Dental Council of India, honorary dental surgeon to the president, former advisor to the armed forces. That was, he was advisor to me. Dental surgeon to the prime minister and former president of the Indian Endodontic Society. And again, a very huge CV he has got, but presently he is consular in International College of Dentists and he is also a reviewer of one of the international journals. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Anil Kohli to this webinar. The next speaker whom we have today is Dr. Ibn van der Waal. Dr. Ibn has also been spearheading the same scenario in London. He's a practitioner in London. He's a co-owner and principal dentist of the Portmore Group passed his graduation from South Africa, Cape Town, from the University of Selenbosch. And in 2007, he did his master level in aesthetic dentistry. He joined dentistry because he loves to work with his hands. 
Dr. Evan, you have a huge number of people today who love to do so. And he has a philosophy which says that a fulfilled, motivated, and happy team will always be the backbone of a successful practice. Now, this is Dr. Eben, and he has contributed immensely along with his other group, where is the partner, that is the um, Dentex group. Yeah, I think Dentex group. And they have, both Portmore and Dentex, have been spearheading the movement in London and in UK that how to come back to uh, normal practice. How to start? Before I set the ball rolling and ask my first question from Dr. Anil, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of our uh, CEO, Mr. Amar Singh. I'm fortunate that he is today with us. And also we have uh, Dr. John uh, Brazier, Dr. Johan uh, Steiger, and Dr. Uh, Lisa Sachs. Guys, uh, you may send your questions by typing in the, in the column below. And uh, this is also running live on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. At this moment, it's running on Facebook, but it will run, a recorded version will run live on the YouTube. And the certificate of participations will be given. And whatever questions you have to ask, please ask. We are not going to go anywhere without asking every single question. Dr. Anil. Yes. It's an honor, sir. Well, Anil, you have been running one of the, you know, multi-speciality practice, which is uh, probably one of the largest and also probably doing, you know, uh, running this for uh, ages because uh, uh, I know that uh, since uh, 78, 79, you have been into practice. And you have also had the opportunity to serve as the president of the Dental Council of India. And I think every possible regulatory body, you have been in that. Tell me, how do you feel now this post-COVID or when we have to learn to do live with COVID, the challenges it poses for the doctors, for dental surgeon staff, and the dental profession. Over to you, Anil. Thank you, Dr. Arun. First of all, honored to be a part of this webinar and uh, really honored the person who is moderating is none other than General Arora. And for the sake of audience knowledge, I would like to share my association with General Arora, whom I knew, I think, more than four decades. He is the one person who has served the armed forces and he has been awarded four medals. Param Vishisht Seva Medal, Vishisht Seva Medal and two other medals. He is the, the only person who has been given four awards in the armed forces. And he has been awarded by Prince of Oman, the greatest honor of the country. Not only that, he was the man who brought the reforms in the armed forces because I have been associated with him. He did a lot of work for continuing dental education for the country. He did a lot of work for the publication of articles. And not only that, he was running a force of 600 people in the armed forces. The moment he left the armed forces, he joined Globe Dental, which had the 32 clinics at that time. And today they have 390, if I'm not wrong. So this man never looks back. And he's being very modest, being a moderator to this class. Because if you ask me, for me, he's a mentor. And I respect him like my mentor, no better than that. Now, coming back to the point, I would like uh, why I said this is an important webinar. The reason being, this is the first webinar where we are going to interact with the UK, with USA and people from international. And it is not a slight presentation. It is not going to be a lecture. Here we are going to talk to the real problem. As it is being opened for rest of the associations and the specialties. I would like to take a minute to go back. Now we all know these are the very difficult and challenging time, especially for the oral health professionals. How did it start? In the month of December 19 in Wuhan, the first case of COVID is being detected. 
on 30th of jan the first case of covid being detected in the india and today in less than 6 months we are having more than 13 million people affected all over the world more than half a million people have died and we are having more than 200000 cases being reported every day so you can understand it is like a wild fire in the jungle is moving forward and we being the population of 1.3 billion and a dentist population of more than 300000 how it affects to this country also on 20th of 4th of march suddenly in middle of the night we get a lockdown and we are made for quarantine self quarantine so what happened during that time we were being advised and we learned the method of distancing method of uh, using the mask method of sanitization now since 24th of march most of the dental clinics in the country were shut down shut down means totally locked down and only you were allowed to do the emergency procedure either on telephone or any big emergency you can touch but no no procedure which involves aerosol was allowed as dr vimal said it was dictated like what you are supposed to do what you are not supposed to do what happened with this we are faced with a challenge of increasing number and higher mobile mortality associated with this covid now coming to the international level firstly we were being told that this is spreads with the close association or contacts and the droplet infection lately it has been said that it is spread with the aerosol generation in the dental offices and you are not supposed to do there is a lot of misinformation as uh, dr arola said social media played as a big role we should only rely on the reliable reliable information only otherwise it sets a bad impact in the minds of a common man and that to the professional in normal case also if we don't look at the corona virus or covid 19 in the dental offices we see almost around 38 type of bacteria in the environment now we have faced the hepatitis c we have faced the hiv these were the blood borne bacterial infection now we are being put forward to face the saliva bot now we have reached to a stage where we know that we have to live with this covid 19 so i doctor general arola said post covid i say no post covid it is we have to learn the methods how to face this challenge in life and come out victorious in this thing back gradually gradually lockdown rules have been relaxed so what i mean to say that people have started moving out people have started going out hotels have been allowed to uh, cater with the distance uh, following another thing and then days to come the schools are going to open the swimming pools are going to open and all that now coming back to the main point for which we are here now the way the dentistry is being practiced in the past we are liable to go for infection so what is the way out we have to change our ways it is going to be a big game changer for the dentistry why i say the game changer the new norms and new protocols have to be followed the infection control the ventilation and the air circulation all these thing and even the distancing between the patients in the waiting room and even the distancing between the two appointments all these new rules have to be followed and we have to we have to win this part what option we have as a dentist now if we go with the social media what option you have you have only three option either you quit the 
profession or you quarantine or you get back to the work so i am one of them who will say please reset and restart of your life again now if i look at this when we talk about you usa america what i googled out there is not even a single study which says today the dental office has led to the infection to somebody in the sense this is not in the literature it is still in evolving the new methods and other things now all over the world when i look at this and talk to the people more than 80% people are back to the work patients are coming back with the reconfidence they are definitely taking all the precaution they are building the confidence in patient by regular calling them and giving them assurance Okay, whatever we are going to do, we are going to take care. Now, how do in in this uh, phase of uncertainty and misinformation, information, we have to go with the guidelines and with the protocols so that we protect ourselves, we protect our staff, we protect our family, and we protect our patients. Now, take a simple example: if a patient is not being treated during the normal course is more than 100 days people have not gone to the clinics and more than 90% of the people are not working it is very unfortunate now a small problem can be an emergency tomorrow what i mean to say that a 13 year girl who had a root canal started 3 months back and it was not being followed because unfortunately the clinics were closed and she couldn't reach to the hospital and she ended up with the extra oral sinus now just imagine that has become an emergency take an example we are a habit of beetle chewing and a sharp teeth and lot many others which are pre cancerous now if they are not diagnosed and they are being left untreated in 6 months it is likely to end up with a malignancy so we we are doing a wrong thing to the society so it is a high time people are talking about the covid vaccine we don't know when is going to come the latest guideline has come from the government rapid testing antigen body te uh, based rapid testing to be done for any aerosol procedure to be done now when you look at it dentistry is being always practiced with the set guidelines so only thing those guidelines have to be redesigned so that we can combat the covid 19 as a professional it is our responsibility to look after our patient and problems which is simple today and left untreated can be emergency tomorrow we have to accept that we have to get back to the practice with the new norms so my thing is to control and safeguard everyone one should design the rules and regulation and the appointments and the waiting area we have to redesign totally our clinic ventilation air conditioning all these things have to be worked out i would like to conclude by saying that human race is born with a gifted instinct to fight and survive we have been faced with pandemic before and emerged victorious so let us remember whenever a problem arrives face it fight it and finish it life doesn't get better by chance it gets better by change only that's my view and we will look forward for the question thank you dr bimal uh thank you anil that's very nice that's i think uh, you you brought it up very well but uh, i'm not yet um, coming to the you know crux of what you spoke because we will have you number of times dr okay. ibn i have uh, i have a very uh, you know interesting question for you because uh, you have spearheaded the movement in uk so that people get back to practice and uh, also you have had some experiences with you know your uh, staff and uh, your patients So, how did you overcome the challenges of restarting the practices, both at Portmore and your dentics? And uh, and uh, do you think the scenario is uh, different uh, different in uh, your country than what you have heard from uh, Anil and from me in India? Over to you, Doctor Ivan, please. Thank you, Doctor Ivan. Uh, 
I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to everyone and um, I feel honored to be in a virtual room with world leaders in dentistry and in business. And uh, thank you for that question. Uh, it seems to me that the situation in India um, overall is very similar in timing and uh, in the amount of restrictions. Um, it's very similar. And I will quickly run through my my experience and uh, the way that we got back to work uh, with everyone. Um, I won't have time to go through every single step, but uh, I invite everyone to contact me on a personal level. Um, I will get uh, Divya to, to share my contact details afterwards and please feel free anyone to contact me with any questions or to share. Um, uh, I'll, I'll quickly thank everyone that has brought us to this way. Thank you um, for Clove Dental, which I'm a shareholder of, um, for, for continuing to interact with us um, here in the UK. Uh, Louis has been, been very instrumental in that. And, and, and thank you also for, for Dentex, my, my big group of practices, which I'm a part of in the UK and my team at Portmore. Uh, we're a global dental community and if each one of you can pick something out of, of what we say here today, I think we'll get uh, much further than trying to do everything ourselves. Uh, this leadership journey that uh, we've been on now since COVID replicates the journey that we've, we've, we've gone up to now. And we as leaders have to use a map to get us to a destination. We have to read the map, one eye on the map, one eye on the destination. But when coronavirus, COVID-19 and the lockdown struck, the map that we used was useless. We can throw that map out of the window because we cannot use it anymore. And also the destination is unknown. We have to now create, create our own map and try to get to the same destination. And as a practice, as a dental practice with lockdown, with all the restrictions and with frustrating guidance from the top, we had to make sure that we go back to square one and think, but like Dr. Anil said, how did we get here in the first place? How can we use our knowledge, our experience, our leadership qualities to get back to treating our patients and running our businesses. Um, it's, I've used six steps um, to get to no patients from completely locked down to being now at nearly full capacity in treating patients. Six steps to follow, not in sequence, but more as a, a tick box exercise where if you follow these six steps, if you make sure that you get there, I, from my experience, this is the best way to get to the industry in a normal or a new normal kind of way. So the first step I call the CAT, the C-A-T. So we, first of all, on day one of lockdown, or when we saw the lockdown coming, we created a platform of communication. Uh, communication between us as leaders, communication, uh, communication down to the patients and down to the staff. So there are many ways we could keep communicating, but there's a lot of noise out there on social media, on, on, on the news. If you have a direct, create a direct platform to communicate between your patients and yourself and between your, your team, your assistants and yourself, that is the only way that we were able to move forward. So that gives us uh, a way to ask the patients, ask the team how they are, are experiencing it, and then also a platform to tell them what we're going to do. Um, there was a lot of news in the UK that dental practices will all go bust and you know they'll never open again, but we created that platform to keep communicating with the patients, our own patients and the bigger dental community that we are there for them, we are going to open, and that in any way that we can help them, we will. And then 
act, we acted upon that. So although we were completely locked down, we were completely told to close, um, there were promises of, of, of urgent dental centers, which took quite a long time to open. But as a practice, and as a, a dental community, we decided we're going to start seeing the patients as quickly as possible. So the amount of hoops we have to jump through, I won't bore you with that. And it's probably similar in, in India where you have to make sure you consult with a number of regulatory bodies and indemnifiers and uh, the government to get to a point where you can actually see patients in a safe way. I'm not taking away the danger of the coronavirus, but um, as Dr. Anil alluded to as well, we know how to deal with microorganisms. We know how to keep our surgeries clean. We've been through many other um, similar cases which probably are, are as dangerous, but we know how to keep them away from our team. We know how to keep them away from our patients. And now by stepping that up, even higher with, with, with even stronger protocols and, and uh, uh, even more personal protective equipment, we, we can be safe. And, and we very quickly acted on that. So that was the second step. The third step, which I have to put in here, which we always wanted to do, but now is almost non-negotiable, is to digitalize. We have to make our practices digital. They can not be any paperwork in the practice anymore. So we created um, platforms for virtual consultations to, to, to speak to patients, for them to be able to contact us. There are no more forms to fill in when they come in. It's all being done digitally. And that makes sure the contact is less, that makes sure the time for them in the practice is less, and that makes sure we keep our staff safe and there's no cross contamination. Digital air purifiers, which you can set um, from remote areas to make sure that the practice, um, the, the air gets clean before you start. Everything has to move into a digital realm um, much quicker now so that there's lot less touching, less cross contamination. And then, the, the big thing before we saw the patients and even during now, the big step, the box you have to tick is rehearsal. You have to rehearse the whole sequence of seeing the patients in the new normal all the time. So I described in the week to Dr. Vimal and Dr. Anil, I described them as a West End play that we were doing or uh, maybe a movie that, that we're creating. And, and us as dental professionals and our team are the actors and the actresses in this big play, in this big production. But when COVID and lockdown struck, our script was taken away. And we were said, you cannot play this movie anymore. You cannot do this lovely play that you've been done all your life now you have to, within the matter of days or weeks, you have to create a new production, a new play. But we are still actors. We are still... ...weeks to rehearse this. Rehearse how we um, use the new PPE, how we... Dr. Eben, if you can switch off your camera, please. Dr. Eben, uh, your voice is breaking. Can you switch off your camera? It's a philosophy that is true in the industry, but even more now. The step is to repeat everything. And we were able to show to, to the uh, governing bodies in the United Kingdom, although we are in lockdown, we were able to show them that we can repeat in a safe way, the procedures um, without even having to think about it. And the only way you can do that is by acting and repeating it over and over again to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, the, 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 the sixth step, which we are busy with now, is called reward. So we are able now to reward our patients who stay 
loyal to us during the lockdown uh, that are coming back and we are rewarding them. We are rewarding the team with enough rest time during this stressful time. This, this new normal, it is tiring. So we're rewarding the staff and the team with, with rest time between the patients. We, we had to increase our opening hours so that we can follow the, the rules of, of distancing or time distancing between appointments and to, to see all those urgent treatments that's, that's been laid. have been amazing I know I haven't uh, results have been amazing the patients are um, so thankful um, they can't thank us enough for going through all these steps to see them the rest of their lives and all the team are happy because they see that we're doing everything to keep them safe. We are doing everything to, to make the working environment. In Portmore and in Dentex because we are um, the, the feeling Dr. Eben, can you switch off your camera because your voice is breaking? Hello. Dr. Eben, can I halt you for a second? Yes. Can you switch off your camera? Your voice is breaking. Thank you. Now, now start. Now try again, please. All right. So. Uh, yes. Better. Thank you. Go ahead. Please. Yes. Yes. So the, the final point I wanted to make the, the results what we have are above expectations because we acted uh, soon we made sure we keep everyone safe and there's a big sense of achievement and a big sense of, of happiness within the staff and the patients. Thank you. Great. Uh, Dr. Ibn, thank you so much. Your point wise description of the actions which we have undertaken and uh, how you went back to results uh, uh, is is really very wonderful and especially I like uh, the way that the script what used to be a standard script is taken away I like it because that's what is happening here every day so so friends when we are talking like this here today we heard something which Anil shared with us which was phenomenal and then we had uh, Dr. Eben who is telling us how did he manage it in uh, uh, London and how did he manage his teams? What all we have been able to do here in uh, India? What have we been able to do in our uh, uh, say 400 odd clinics all over the country? What did we do in which way we managed our show? How did we change our scripts? So we were lucky that you know, we we closed down our clinics before when uh, even the lockdown was announced before that our CEO, Amar, said that we are closing it down. So we had that lead. And that was a very great uh, wisdom on his part. He could look up at it. And we were, you know, at that time, we were ready to uh, take a bet on it. I said four more days. He said today. And uh, actually, he was right. So we could prepare our, adv our advisories in about four days' time. We, we have worked out a simple, straightforward 10x level of protection. And to all my friend dental surgeons, I'm ready to share that with all of you. How Clove does it? How Clove manages our increased level of protections in each clinic so that all of us can do that and the profession can get benefited. How we instilled the hand sanitization protocols amongst the doctors, the staff, the patients, how we made sure that everyone is using the face mask and a particular set of face masks for a particular procedure, how the social distancing is to be achieved, how did we manage the disinfection of the surfaces and how that has to be repeatedly done to make sure that we have complete disinfection 
how to create special care for the elderly then go focused approach like what anil also mentioned and even also mentioned that how to go ahead prepare your premises was it very expensive to prepare the premises was it very difficult to organize the aerosol removal uh, high suction machines which have almost 99 plus percent accuracy i don't know but that's what is said so how to create you know uvc or far uvc uh, ultraviolet light uh, cabinets how to create formal in chambers which are you know comparatively not very expensive but at the same time very useful globe already had a four step sterilization as our trademark which we knew that that we are going to now be more stringent on it how to ensure that every patient is called before he comes so for that we had a e dentist at clove so it's a, it was a separate scenario you know we we worked out we we improved we metamorphosed we went ahead how to make sure that every patient thermal reading is recorded as well as, as well as pulse oximeter is there right in the beginning right in the first week of april how to record the medical and travel history of every and every single patient to make sure that he is not a risk what kind of ppe will the patients wear ppe for patients was a first choice and guys last time i i tested i i i tried this hypothesis with you that the first dental college in the world came up in 1840 that was the baltimore dental college and mind you rubber dam came into existence in 1860s that means whosoever had the mind towards dentistry he knew it that all procedures will be done using rubber dam are we using rubber dams every clinic of clove rubber dam is being used my second issue which i touched upon last time was disinfecting the surgical site what is our surgical site the outside face and the intraoral can we disinfect it yes you can bring down the viral load tremendously by very simple mouthwash swishing gargling all three are different you can definitely bring down the viral load from the oral cavity by using your povidone iodine you can use chlorhexidine and you can use other mouthwashes you can use hydrogen peroxide you can use anything guys make sure that you are disinfecting the surgical sites make sure that you are asking your patients to brush make sure that your biomedical waste is going and make sure that all this is happening and you are carrying out your fumigation not to forget fumigation now what is the weakest link if i look at it i think weakest link in a dental clinic is a dental assistant weakest link if you can somehow make sure that your weakest link is the best link he becomes a power source for you to assist you to help you and to make sure that we can provide a clean dentistry i think our battle is won now with this i have a you know a very surprise uh, caller from uh, america today i have uh, dr malika with me hi dr malika can you uh, can you hear me yeah. yes so dr malika uh, you are in america and you have been practicing now for a number of years and uh, i i believe you have a multi speciality practice and you have your own you know huge staff tell me in america how much importance the dental care is given that is one number two what do your regulatory bodies say what way the regulatory bodies are telling you to progress and what are the other things which you could do in your clinic share with us whatever you can we would love it malika please go ahead sure thank you dr roda firstly for having me on this platform and uh, you know in the us our governing bodies ada for that matter or the state i am in in virginia and our governor in may had stated that we could resume back to see our patients not only for emergencies but also elective procedures you know so all the dentists now i would say probably 90% of the dentists in the usa are back to work 
and they are back wow. almost to 80 to 85 percent of the capacity so patients are very happy they are very very thankful that they are back to the office they are, in fact this is the first time patients are coming and thanking us so much that we are back in practice this said we are again taking all the measures which are important like you have gone through dr kohli has gone through dr eben has gone through the certain protocols which we have to follow you know whether that is sending a questionnaire to the patient to answer the basic questions checking their temperature you know making sure that they have not been in contact with anybody who has covid they are not sick using mouthwash here in usa we are using one one part of hydrogen peroxide three parts of water they are asked to switch for 20 seconds you know we check their temperature as soon as they are seated again like you said the assistance the weak link we've gone through them we've you know educated them to make sure they are cleaning everything they are making sure everything is up to the protocol also ada our governing body has an interim guideline which i think everybody if they log on to the ada website is free to print you could print that web that toolkit it is a guidance which gives dental offices a basically a start point where you can get back to work you know like this the coronavirus is not going away it's going to be the new normal so this has a long term impact on our life but also we have to think as dentists if we don't see our patient what is the long term impact on their dental health and that's the reason i think ada has decided that we need to get back to work it's very important that we start seeing our patients because dental health is very important if we ignore it any longer then we are not serving our community very nicely put very nicely put dr malika i am i am impressed the way you have put it that if we wait any longer we are not serving our community and that's our primary aim that's what we are here for i have a very nice question for dr ibn dr ibn uh, dr uh, nupur bhatnagar would like to know lately who revised its guidelines that covid can now be airborne how do we change how do we modify our precautionary measures would you like to take that dr ibn yes thank you uh, dr bimal uh, it's uh, at the moment in the uk we we have a fallow time uh, i don't know if you you know that uh, term or use the same term where we uh, leave the surgery the aerosols to basically settle over a period of time. There's still some debate on exactly how long this fallow time should be. Uh, at the moment in the UK, it's the longest in the world, I believe it's about uh, 60 minutes. But part of our new normal now is to work in longer shifts in the practice so that one dental surgeon can use two uh, surgeries uh, at, uh, or operatories, as you call them, at one time. So I would use I, uh, I operate to do an aerosol generating procedure and then close the door and uh, put new PPE on and move to another operatory where I'll do another procedure while the aerosols settle in that room and um, the scheduling of the patients have become very important to make sure that we do that uh, in a way. Um, the science will come out um, at the moment with Dentex doing a study on the air filtration where the air gets uh, circulated or cleaned by HEPA filters within two to three minutes. Uh, and, and the results of that study will come out soon to reduce the fallow time. But at the moment, we have to accept that the, the virus will be in the air source, or it could be, uh, and we have to take care of it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you are very much right, because uh, we also here did the same, that we had uh, separated out our surgeries. Uh, right in the month of uh, first week of April, we created a separate surgery, which was aerosol generating surgery. And the second was a non aerosol generating uh, surgery. And we divided the procedures also very carefully. 
so that you know we are not undertaking any such procedure which is creating uh, uh, these kind of uh, processes and Nupur, there is one more thing there is a huge amount like if you if you look at that information who has not yet fully recognized it to be a um, finally an airborne virus not yet they have not yet fully accepted it because the research in these things is time taking there's a huge amount of research which is yet to come dr anil would you like to talk about uh, virus being airborne and uh, what is your views about it anil ventilation is please is the most important part and secondly the new norms are being evolving because research is still on as you very rightly said who is not said that is the cause one of the cause and as i mentioned in my previous this thing also even in the environment of a dental operatory there are 38 type of bacteria and viruses already including influenza tuberculosis they were being found so this is one of them and i think ventilation is the most important part and rest whatever methods we can bring it down we should follow uh, thank you anil uh, like uh, like you know myself and uh, our ceo amar singh who is an engineer yeah. so we were seeing a sample uh, uh, you know of a particular uh, high suction machine yeah. uh, in china uh, almost couple of months back and uh, when we were discussing with him we realized that the machine has a flaw actually he could notice it because he was an engineer he could notice it that if you are sucking out that if you have your you know high high fiber filter on top and then you have you know your cotton filter and then you come up with your glass filter and then carbon filter and then hepa filter and if you have the last chamber as the uv uh, c radiation is that this is wrong actually that radiation chamber should be on top so that other filters do not get infected and i am telling you a lot more is going to come up because that was also being listened to by mr shami gambhir of unicorn and uh, they have now developed something on the similar lines which i am sure will you know be very useful for us for future because we will need now high high vacuum high volume air suction units from us um on the same lines i would like to tell our friends who are on the facebook that please send your questions on the facebook we are answering those and uh, before i take any further i would like to acknowledge the presence of dr hari prakash today i am uh, seeing his name uh, here in the list uh, dr hari prakash uh, welcome here and i also acknowledge the presence of dr anmol singh kala so dr anmol uh, that's really nice to uh, know that uh, you are here these are some of the stalwarts who have been you know our seniors and our colleagues so it's it's always a honor that when they they join us here so dr anil my next question to you is look you have been in the dental council of india which is our top regulatory body so you have been there for too long <laughs> work speaks for itself please share with me what role should dci play if you would have been in dci today what role you would have played i know it's a trick question but you know you uh, have no, been a leader all, I, always I, 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 them. you know we have the guidelines we have the infection control method but how seriously they being implemented that is a question as you asked me if i was there i should have taken your help and we should have become <laughs> strong enough to examine the clinics whether they are being following the infection control methods or not you know i'll give you an example i was just going through the literature and i just saw this clinical establishment bill yes it says the size of the clinic it says 100 square feet out of 100 square feet 65 is the surgical side and the 35 is the reception area the waiting area and the toilet now with this new problem coming up i think all these things have to be redesigned and we have to address these issues and bring out with the new norms as you said very rightly and then we proceed 
then coming to the point because you were wanted to know from me ke how did we go back to the practice and how did we convince our staff how did we convince our doctors so we had the zoom meeting with the staffs and with the doctors and we assured them and gave them the confidence that is the one part with eden also even also discussed and second was the patient now see after practicing for almost four decades patient has full faith on you and he puts his life to your hand it is now is your decision what precautions and what you are going to deliver so it is for us firstly to understand the problem once we understand we take the do care as you rightly said you close for four days in advance and you had redesigned everything you plan everything so same way we have no problem of patient coming to the clinic but it is your conscious what you are doing is right or not what precautions you are taking or not i think if that is there building the confidence between the doctor and the patient and between the colleagues and between the staff including the reception all these things together can work and is a win win situation for yes uh, anil i agree with you completely actually Actually, I see that government agencies, regulatory bodies, are doing good work, given yeah. the constraints what they have today. I think yeah. I appreciate them. They are doing wonderful job. There is no doubt about it. But I would have loved if the consolidated guidelines would have reached us much earlier, because and, if, and you know, not only that, if they could have taken the state governments into cognizance right in the beginning, so that nobody would have been telling this that uh, close the clinics. Rather, they would have said, follow these protocols and open your clinics. You agree with me? i fully agree with you i fully agree and you know different different thing coming from different states that puts confusion in the mind of the patient as well as yeah. patient uh, uh, in the professionals also i think yes. we need a consolidated thing and which should be i unique. agree and i agree and that is why you know ministry of health and family welfare yeah. on 19th may came up with a very consolidated guidelines which were fabulous actually speaking mm -hmm. that was very nice job done yeah. by ministry of health and family welfare and once I, they have given an umbrella guidelines it becomes imperative on the states and various other people to follow those and that's what we have been doing one question for you anil which has come from um, dr shubhi mishra where what about the under undergraduate colleges when will the colleges open we are fed up doing zoom meetings you want to take I, it i fully agree i think uh, is too early because the number of cases rising every day and the social distancing and even forget about social distancing traveling is an issue then is staying in the hostels and working in a open environment where 50 chairs are there i think is little bit more time is needed and little bit more planning has to be done and i fully understand uh, about this girls uh, problem but i think soon it will be over good so uh, so my dear uh, dental college students a little while more and use this time to gain other skills which you have plenty now the next question isha asks how to encourage our patients to get back to clinics for treatment even would you like to take that how to encourage the patients to get back to the clinics for treatment what yes, would you like to do Yes, thank you. Uh, the the perception of the patients of how are we going to keep them safe is of paramount importance. So those communication lines to tell them what we actually have done to prepare for them to come in, and to show them via the websites and and other medias how safe it is. We made videos uh, for the patients to see what the new journey would be like. um and we had phone calls from uh, to every patient before they come in to explain and reassure to them so communication lines are very important the video showing them what it's going to be like uh, must prepare them very well and um uh, i can encourage clothes to 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 look at it and maybe do the same for all their uh, patients as well yeah uh dr ibn that's that's so very correct and no. uh, i i i fully agree but uh, Um, Dr. Vimal, I would like to add here. Yes, sir. One is communication between the patient and the doctor, and second is the confidence building. 
yeah. which is important so that's what we do like uh, we are uh, we invite our patients to come when we have uh, you know mostly some other patients in the clinic uh, one or two case who can talk to the other guy and give him some confidence we always make sure that if we can slot some patients like that that we've got a patient who has got it some job done and he is very confident so at that time we request another one to come and then we share let them share their knowledge information that this is very safe it's safe procedure so that's what exactly what you people are telling so i have another um, question coming up from dr das how to offer emergency care to a patient with covid 19 Dr. Eben. Uh, yes, so if, uh, we will try to. If it, if they have tested positive, uh, we will definitely um, refer them to specialist uh, centres that we have in the UK that uh, treat them, and they will try to do to help the patient or get them out of pain without using aerosols. And uh, if they can get them out of pain once they've recovered from the COVID-19, get on with the the real procedure. But um, it's it's taken very seriously, and and specialist centres have opened to treat um, only those patients. Good. Uh, Anil Niyati, he wants oh. to know. Anil, we will take questions very quickly now because no, we're we running short of time. Uh, I would. Anubhav Nyati wants to know how air purifiers are helpful in clinics. Anil, see, firstly, I would like to add in the previous question, in yeah. environment like our country, all COVID patients should be treated in the hospital environment, not in the private practice. That is number one. Mm. And now you talked about the air purifier. Yeah. Now. to be honest with you as we previously also discussed other issues it is going to reduce the volume in the air of the microorganism some companies say up to 99 88 this is a debatable question yes but that is still on you yes. know somebody called me yesterday if we want to put the filters in your air conditioner which will take care of it i said what size you are talking about now if you look at uh, corona virus it is 0.1 micron and they talk about 0.3 micron i said yes. what the talking okay. yes i agree anil so anil that's what i am saying if you have nothing and if you have a aerosol extraction unit which you have studied which is doing the work i'll say yeah. go for it yeah don't I hesitate agree. I agree. I agree. Something is better than nothing. Yes. Yes. It, go for it. Don't don't hesitate. Don't even bother about it. And uh, that's what it is. And I, uh, I have a question coming up uh, by Kundan Kumar. Should DCI come out with advisory for general population to allay their fear regarding dental treatment and what they should look for the safety protocol followed in dental clinic? I said we need public awareness from the statutory bodies. as well as from government of india and from the professionals that it is safe to come to the clinic and to get the treatment done and there is no fear fear psychosis has to be removed yeah uh my dr kundan kumar that's what exactly dr anil kohli former dci president is doing and i am sure dci is already on the roll for this they will be following with various regulatory instructions we have uh, dr harshita to dr ibn in uk is it emergency treatments that are doing or regular consultations are you doing only emergencies or are you doing the elective procedures also dr ibn please uh, thank you dr vimal yes we are doing all types of treatment uh, we have already gone through the backlog of the most uh, urgent treatments um, and we prioritize them we are finished with that now and now we are seeing patients for more general treatment prioritizing urgent but all procedures uh, are being done at the moment good uh, i have another question by no name sir my family is worried that i as a dentist will catch infection i covered this point the working ladies they want me to give up the practice because they feel that i'll bring disease home 
is there any literature which i can take home now my dear friend please understand you will have to take your family into full confidence take them along with you make them visit try to make them understand that before covid also you were doing the work with the aerosols tell them that before covid also the viral load in the mouth was no less tell them that the viral load of covid is still undergoing a huge amount of research the virus is yet to be studied for its density for the dosimetry for the distance it can travel because this disease basically travels only by two methodologies simply put one is aerosol stroke droplets stroke splash stroke splatter and the other is by contact that's all try to explain them about the disease in length tell them what kind of precautions we are taking in our clinics which you will be undertaking and tell them that it is as safe it is more safer than receiving vegetables or buying vegetables from the market explain to them i am sure you will be somewhere and you will be definitely on now next is uh, dr nida hamid is asking rapid antibody kits advised for covid 19 testing in the dental offices now this is a new thing which they said that these new things will be available that is the rapid antibody kits yeah let the me dental office yeah i would like yes anil please that this is the recent thing which has come up last week only then i spoke to two labs okay how we can go about it they say whenever you want a patient to go for any procedure and you want to and it is not a false proof let me let me make it very clear you can send the patient and we within one hour we will give you the result or if you have too many patients we, where you want to we will put our man there in the your clinic he will come because these are the not the procedures to be done by the dentist this has to be done by the pathologist or a technician who is well trained and in that also there is a chance of error is there but you are ruling out to some extent about the antibody test and the every, every test cost you around 1500 rupees so uh, i have another uh, question for anil for you that uh, the counseling for the post graduation is getting delayed and also uh, they are asking uh, that you know in dental college the departmental chairs are very close to each other and obviously they are not likely to be shifted so do you see any difference uh, in the thinking of the colleges in future over to you well, i think the council council has to come out with the new norms even in the united states and other places uh, you have to change with the times and change is the only thing which is permanent so i think uh, dental council should look into this matter and should address safeguarding the life of the future dentists good anil i have another question for you uh, you are very popular you know you are getting so many questions um he says many dental professionals are out of work as most of the clinics have reduced the count of dentists with them so dr anil why don't you go and meet some of the ministers because you know all of them and get us some jobs dr anil why don't you help us the out of 300000 dentists in the country and i just went through the literature before coming to you 2.7% are in the government job around 10000 or 15000 yes. and all most of them are in the practice now if you have love for the dentistry you must go back to the practice this is the right time and start working because don't look somebody will offer you the job or you will go to the minister and meet no just go and start working go to the clo i'll request dr vimal to hire you right away that's a promise <laughs> so thank you anil uh, we will honor uh, your words and we would love to help our uh, dental professionals why not uh, we are getting back to work that was another question that uh, how are you opening your clinics so my dear doctors uh, we have very clear understanding from our ceo and from our board of directors that uh, dr vemal you are not going to open clinics unless we have all safety precautions in place for our doctors for our staff for our patients and my dear friends i told you that i am ready to share our protocols with you in totality whoever wants it all all of you 
And what we have done, one step addition, which I am sure Anil would love it, that Anil, we have an audit body, mm -hmm. which is your favorite subject. Yeah. And this audit body audits the clinics twice every month. And here they see it that every single protocol is being followed. And if it is not being followed, then definitely the doctor has to undergo very specialized, highly specialized differential trainings, and they have to go through explanations. So they follow it. What do you have to say about this? Do we have any such thing by our central regulatory bodies or state regulatory bodies? And I would like Dr. Eben also to take up this question. Guys, this will be the last question because we will be winding up soon. Yes, Dr. I might take up. I think dependence on the regulatory body is going to take long time. The regulations to come long time, as you know how the process is. So it is the self-discipline which is most important, right? In your case, you have 350 clinics. I do agree. You have the auditing system and all. Now, single chair, multiple chair, it depends on the individual. How disciplined is he? Is. And second thing, which you very rightly said in the middle of the conversation we had, there has to be a good link and good training for the dental assistant, which is a very, very important part. And these, these rules and regulations may be there in the book, may be by the regulatory body, but ultimately it has to be followed by you and me. How sincere we are. If we are love our profession, we love our family, we love our patient, we should follow the rules and we should give the best. Only then we will be respected in the society. Yeah. So Anil, what I'm trying to say is that uh, Government is coming out with very firm, laid down guidelines and very clear rulings on the subject that you open your clinics in this way. We have like, we have this, we call it, I'm for, for the sake of convenience, I'm telling you it's an audit, but actually it's our quality team. Well, we so have we it. have our quality team. Don't you think that these bodies should also have their quality teams in place? Time has come now so that we can see that actually all the regulatory things are being undertaken. Over to you once again, Anil, and then even please, you take up this uh, answer. Yes. The government should involve the people from the armed forces, people from the private, people from the hospital, before they put down these guidelines to be implemented in the society or in the profession. Like in IMA, in medical profession, most of the things are being decided by the group of the people, those who are involved. Like you take people from all India Institute, you people take like 350 clinics you run. You can be one of them and a couple of people from different colleges. And that team, I think uh, all India Institute made some team. I didn't see the result yet, what they recommended. But I think the involvement of the professional is very, very important in making any guideline for any profession, not only for dentistry. I agree with Anil and uh, even, yes, please. Yes. It's, um, I, would, uh, I agree with Anil and I would think from a UK perspective as well, which is really important is our record keeping. So I think from to, to satisfy the regulatory bodies, we have to make sure we record everything in the patient's notes, what we have been doing to keep them safe. Um, and if we act in the patient's best interest always, and keep a record of what we've been doing to do that, then most uh, or all regulatory bodies should be satisfied with um, our procedures. Good, so, so we do agree that the quality team or there is a need for equality departments to be set up across the country for uh, things like this. Now, before I hand it over to our uh, global chairperson to wind it up, uh, guys, uh, let me share with you a couple of very important things. The research in this particular field is yet to come. It's taking time. And any article is not worth it. Now, 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 have you ever imagined where was the samples being taken? Was it not an invasive process? The sample collection from either the nasopharynx or the oropharynx, both were invasive procedures. 
they themselves were generating certain amount of aerosols. Can this sample be collected from saliva? Or can it be self-regulated by the patient to have that sample so that it becomes easier, so that there is no health personnel needed for collection of samples? If you look at the research which is going on, now like, can you tell me that your, your whole game plan is going to change because already it is proven that people who have poor oral hygiene, they are at much greater risk for lung infection. We are aware that the bacteria which are causing the periodontal disease, they are responsible for creating the infection in the lung as well. We are aware that the cytokines, that reaction, that when they're excreted out, the lungs, the membranes get much more vulnerable to infection. We are aware that, you know, the gingivalis, uh, P. gingivalis and all these bacteria of the uh, periodontal uh, disease, they create your oral mucosa also much more, you know, susceptible to uh, growth of the infections. I have been seeing the literature at depth. One article is not enough, my dear friends, uh, since this is a gathering of doctors, one article is not enough. You will have to see that one article and then combine the knowledge of 10 articles and have a meta-analysis to come out with some kind of a conclusion that yes, this is right, I can probably adopt this. Otherwise, if you are, like many of times, I, my friends send me an article and I tell them that I've already gone through it, I have gone six more of this, at this moment, it is not truly applicable to us. And guys, this, this research which is coming up is going to make your job much, much, much more important. Every COVID patient, they will come running to you. Please make him free from infection from the oral cavity because his vulnerability increases 100 times if he is suffering from a disease or if his alveolar bone is disrupted by the bacteria which causes periodontal uh, periodontitis and destructive ulcerative uh, periodontitis. So with this note, I'm telling you the future is very bright. I will uh, say, tell all my doctor friends, you have heard some very wonderful um, information from uh, both Dr. Anil Kohli and Dr. Eben. Please uh, note it down, see how we can use it and tell us what way we can take it further. Thank you so much. Uh, may I hand, you, hand over uh, and request uh, Mr. Louis, sir, to please take up this and wrap up the proceedings for the webinar. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I have to say that I don't think any one of us can fail to be deeply impressed by the incredible knowledge and the skill that we have heard from our speakers today. You know, the uh, Dr. Anil was talking about this COVID epidemic as a wildfire. And then again, when you look at the actual problem, uh, what they call the cytokine storm, and you look at wildfires right across the world, the way that they're handled is to create fire breaks, to prevent them, to contain them. I know that this has been a very serious discussion because we're dealing with a very serious matter. But Dr. Eben, um, I that must say I had a, a lighter moment when you very generously agreed to share your contacts with a thousand people. I think being your, one of your patients, you're not gonna have any time to treat me. So I think <laughs> you, you might want to rethink that for a, for a moment. Yes. But what you said accurately and what I heard coming out of this remarkable masterclass is that we are a global dental community and we behave as a community. We've had the privilege and the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Malika from the United States, from the United Kingdom. The India alone is bigger than all of those countries put together from Dr. Anil Kohli. And I was delighted to hear that Dr. Hari Prakash is with us. I can't see you, Hari, but Dr. Prakash was with us from day one, and I hope, I hope you are well. 
Yevon, you talked about the speed of reaction and the communication. And that is what we saw the Clovers doing. It was stimulated and stirred and supported by Amar Singh and Dr. Bimal, really an unbeatable leadership team who no. spoke to the shareholders and your shareholders are universal. They're all over the world, very professional people. And I write and tell them what you've been doing to a single person. They are so impressed. There are a few shareholders on this uh, masterclass right now. Yevon, one thing I wanted to ask you about, being one of your patients, you talked about the reward if we came back. So you might, you know, I'd like to know what that reward is <laughs> before I come back. I'm, I'm sure it's very good. It will be, it will be. <laughs> very good. I think I'd like to wrap up by, by referring to something that, uh, one of the things uh, Dr. Anil opened with is to face something to fight it and to finish. Now we faced it and we're fighting it, but we recognize that we are far from the finish. Yeah. And we must make sure that we are not the people that have to adapt, but the people that are proactive. And uh, I must say, Vimal, it's very comforting to hear the things I already knew and additional things to find all the skills coming together to make sure that we protect our global community, which includes our patients. Now, somebody spoke about the weakest link being the deputy, the DAs. I think it was you, Dr. Bimmel. But one of our strongest allies is, are the people that are very many more than our DAs. For every DA, we might have 20 or 30 patients coming in, or 40 patients. And those are our most important allies. And the way we communicate with them before they come, and the way they tr we treat them when they come, because those are our allies. And those are also the people that leave our clinics and who tell others and bring confidence back to the dental community. So just to wrap up, as I was listening to all of this deep knowledge in the masterclass, you look at what the rest of the world is doing and there's a choice. You either resign, give up, or you redesign. And that's what Clover's done. The redesigning of this global dental community. So thank you for your vigilance. And on behalf of your shareholders, on behalf of your board, and on behalf of the global community, I salute you and I thank you. Keep safe and keep our patients safe. Thank you, Dr. Bimmel. Thank you, Omar.